Mark, I have a question for you. Um, you had a you know great rock career. You were a guitarist. You met all these rock stars. You helped some of them become famous. You had people recording your songs. Then there was a point where you said a door closed as you saw you know the grunge thing coming in and you weren't a grunge guy. And then you being the business person that you are, you weren't ever your typical rocker that got all into drugs and just was in it for the partying. You seemed like you were, you took what you did seriously, which is very admirable. Um, and so then you started uh, movies and TV. They were buying your songs. How did that happen? Like what happened there? Well, um, yeah. So um, I had always been recording music. You know, most musicians are recording music. That's, you know, that's what they do. Mm -hmm. And um, I had some friends that were working um, on uh, small movies or TV shows. They were pretty low on the totem pole. They were assistant coffee makers or, you know, assistant grips or whatever. But a couple of them were, were tasked with finding music for like bar scenes or stuff like that, you know. And I remember, you know, a couple of my friends just saying, hey, you know, we're looking for a you know, this movie, um, I'm working on this movie. The directors asked me to find some rock music for a bar scene. I, you know, I know you've got some demos hanging around. And sure enough, you know, I, I got a couple of, you know, a couple of placements that way, you know, where they used a piece of my music. And as I mentioned earlier, I get a screen credit, you know, you get a couple hundred bucks. And I got the idea. That was kind of the aha moment for the second part of my my career, which was uh, developing a music library, which eventually became to be known as Master Source. If you like our videos, go ahead and click on like and subscribe. We really appreciate it. Thanks. It started pretty accidentally, pretty organically, as I mentioned, with just, you know, um, me placing some rock music in um, some small productions. And then I decided just to get on the phone and I stayed on the phone for about 15 years. <laughs> so, um, and, you know, come to find out when we roll the clock back to the early 90s, there were music libraries out there. However, none of them had songs. None of them had, you know, music that sounded generically similar to like ACDC or Van Halen or somebody wanted to license a, you know, a, Garth Brooks song back then it was going to be way too expensive and take way too much time for them to get that those licenses you know tv shows um you know they're in production on a weekly basis some of them you know so my idea was you know what you're not going to afford that you're never going to get that Van Halen song you're never going to get that Zeppelin song you're never going to get that Madonna song but you know what I can produce something for you that sounds generically similar to those guys not ripping them off but producing something that sounds the same in style, the ballpark, you know, close your eyes. It could be Garth Brooks, but it's not, you know, it's, it's somebody uh, singing, a, you know, in a cowboy uh, twang like, like Garth Brooks, you know, or it has a dance beat similar to some of the stuff that Madonna was doing. But I never ripped, I never ripped people off. Sure. I produced music that was in the ballpark. Right. So the same was, genre. Yeah. In the same genre. So, um, that was my idea, my, my, my aha moment that, you know, I could produce this music for, for these uh, movies and TV shows and get it done for them very quickly and, you know, take a decimal two or a decimal point or two off the license fee and they'd have it with no hassles. And okay. my business took off like a rocket. I was the first guy to, to do this. I was the first guy to develop a library that was song centric. Wow. Not, and not so did you, did you actually produce all of the songs or did you have other friends no, and other no, people? No. My value to the business was better spent getting up, being on the phone and, and you making know, the deals, yeah, <laughs> you know, um, meeting clients and establishing relationships. You know, I, I, I'd be a waste of my time to be, be in the studio all day, knocking out a ACDC. Yeah, that would be a lot, a lot of work. You no, know, I, I, uh, you know, I, I realized that very, very early on that, you know, again, the better value of my time was spent developing the, the, the core of the business. So I always hired guys to write the music. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And would you say that your catalog was mostly source music? Is it, is that called source music for people? Well, that I think that's a generic name for it, for it. You know, the business was called master source after right. all, but source music, you know, for those people that don't know what the term is, it, 
essentially means music that emanates from a source, such mm -hmm. as a car radio, mm -hmm. or a jukebox, or you know, uh, a drive, you know, a car driving by and you hear music coming out of a car. That that's where the term source music you mm -hmm. know, initially came from. Um, but so my business how long did you do that? Whoops, sorry, that's my dog. <laughs> Cassie, no, 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 no. No, we have the famous Mark Ferrari on. What? Uh, <laughs> but I, I do want to I do want to mention the fact that in addition to music being used in TV shows and films, they are used in so many other avenues. You know, uh, sure. movie trailers, uh, network promos, radio promos, video games. By the way, this is an interesting fact. Master Source had three songs licensed for other people's music videos. Really? Okay, the big one is Toby Keith's I Love This Bar, which has been viewed like, I don't know, a hundred million times, mm -hmm. right? If you watch that video, it starts with Toby Keith walking into a bar that music is playing in already. And that was uh, my music. So, oh, oh, that's cool. cool. Another example was uh, Rage Against the Machine. They have a, a video called, uh, a video for a song called The Gorilla Radio. And it starts with a... Um, like a dream sequence. And there's a piece of music playing in the dream sequence. So I always thought that was bizarre that I had, you know, my music yeah. license for other, for major labels, uh, music video. So right. lots of applications for music. It wasn't just strictly film and TV. Right. Uh, so you met, you asked me how long I did it for. I started, you know, full time, I think, I'm going to guess 1994. And, and I sold my business to Universal Music Publishing in 2007. And I worked for them for five years. Uh, you know, I ran the business I sold to them. <laughs> uh, and in 2012, I decided not to renew my employment agreement. But here we are nine years later, and I still produce music for Master Source, even though I'm not employed, I'm not a Universal Music Group employee anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm the guy that's producing all, they're still adding to the Master Source catalog every year. And I'm the guy that's producing all that music. It's in your blood. You can't give it up. <laughs> yeah, I've, got a, I've got a 27 year run now, I guess. Uh, in this wow. Thing. Good for you.